A rally is taking place July 6th, and there's going to be a lot of contentious figures. People like Milo Yiannopoulos, Mike Cernovich, Enrique Tarrio, Laura Loomer, etc. It's a rally for free speech, so you know pretty much what they're calling for. Free speech. Many of these people have been deplatformed in a variety of ways. They've been smeared in the press, but not everyone who's attending is necessarily a controversial banned figure. While you do have people like Laura Loomer and Milo Yiannopoulos and Gavin, people who have been removed from various platforms, and, and Proud Boys and Riccatario, Mike Cernovich has not been banned. I, he was banned from Medium, I think, but not from Twitter. Posobiec ha- hasn't been. I, I think Roger Stone isn't allowed to post anything right now. You've got Omar Navarro from uh, the 43rd District. That's Maxine Waters. You've got people like Joey Salads and uh, Will Witt, Ashton Birdie. So there's a lot of people who haven't been banned. Only a few of them have been. And they're basically holding a rally for free speech. Though these figures are controversial, plain and simple. Like, you know, controversial in the sense that they themselves don't warrant the controversy, but there's controversy around them because of their politics. But here's the main story. All Out DC appears to be a new Antifa account targeting this rally specifically, saying the alt-right is coming to DC July 6th for an organizing clearinghouse. To, uh, organizing clearinghouse? Together, we can stop the alt-right and put an end to Trump's white supremacist fantasies. They've been putting up uh, posters throughout D.C. In this tweet, they say, first posters put up and around uh, town opposing the alt-right. Apparently, in one of these tweets, they doxed Tucker Carlson. Now, I can't, I, I don't know if that's true because apparently the post has been removed, but we can see this poster that was put up. It says, block the alt-right. However, Tucker Carlson is not speaking at the event, so I don't know why they're targeting him. But these three arrows represent the strike through. It's the Antifa mark. It's supposed to be a mark over, you know, like it was was related to World War II Germany. It says influencer, racist with a huge following and platform uses to promote racist dog whistles, but he has nothing to do with the event. Now, apparently this person says Antifa group All Out District is posting Tucker Carlson's personal information around DC and then sharing it to Twitter. Last time Antifa Antifa accounts doxed him, Twitter initially left the tweets up despite groups showing up at Tucker's house. This was against Twitter's TOS. That's true. I don't know what was blocked here. Apparently it's personal information. But what I can say is they did dox Tucker Carlson. Activists showed up to his house. Apparently his wife hid in the closet. Tucker claimed they broke the door. Uh, maybe. Um, it wasn't like they broke the door in, but there was damage to it. And this is actually a hate crime in D.C., targeting people. So these posters might act. This is, if this is being put up in D.C., this might actually be a, a violation of human rights to target people for their political beliefs. Now, naturally, Antifa is putting up a lot of lies in their posts, and I'll show you in a second. But um, assuming this is uh, doxing Tucker Carlson, it, uh, I imagine that might make sense because the actual All Out DC apparently hasn't posted that individual photo. Though you can see the poster here, you can't make out what's on the flyer. But I want to make a—I want to point to a few things about the lies that are being put up with this specifically. In this photo, we can see what looks like Jack Posobiec, but also Richard Spencer. My understanding is that these two individuals absolutely hate each other. Richard Spencer had a rally. Jack Posobiec held a counter rally. And there was smack talking abound. Putting them both in the same flyer is disingenuous. More importantly, Richard Spencer's not speaking at the event, at least as far as I can tell. I'm not saying you got to be fans of these people. A lot of people don't like these people, but I'm pretty sure Richard Spencer is not one of the speakers. Although it looks like there's some confirmed speakers. Um, Freedom Q&A VIP ballroom event will contain some controversial individuals. Um, Jacob Wall, for instance, but I, I don't believe Richard Spencer would be speaking considering they don't get along with him. So I'm curious as to why they posted that photo. Now, they also show this photo of Joey Salads wearing a World War II era German armband. The thing is, that's from a prank video, from a skit, not, not a real thing. It would, be, it would be akin to like activists pulling photos from Saturday Night Live to try and make a claim about somebody. It's, it's, pur- it's a purposefully out of context photo meant to just smear uh, Jack Posobiec. Additionally, Laura Loomer is not alt-right, not in any capacity. Look, I get it. People want to argue that Gavin McInnes is alt-right and he's denied this and he's denounced the alt-right, but he does have quotes like, like this one, assuming it's true. The point is Gavin McInnes has said things that have crossed the line, 100%. Now, some of these quotes have been taken out of context and used to sound way worse than they really are, but he does have things that I believe he shouldn't have said. Cross the line. And you know what? You reap what you sow. 
Laura Loomer, on the other hand, is far from alt-right. She's Jewish, I'm pretty sure. Not sure uh, why they're smearing people like this, because a lot of the the people they're claiming are alt-right aren't actually alt-right. But I guess the, the main goal, as with most, most, you know, most of the time when you see Antifa smearing people, the intention is to lie. It's uh, to accuse everyone of being the worst of the worst. You know, they've tried throwing that label at me once or twice. It's failed completely. Um, it's, you know, because for one, I'm not even fans of these people. And like, I've been openly critical of them as I just criticized Gavin McInnes. But also I'm, as you may know, mixed race. So that's kind of weird, isn't it? But sure, sure enough. The Daily Beast published a story claiming that minorities are joining alt-right groups. Don't ask me why. It's just complete absurdity and insanity. So um, I'm, I'm going to ignore their website for now. But uh, they do have other posts where they highlight the speakers and then reference things they've said, ref- referring to all of them as all right. I'm going to sneeze. I'm trying to not to. Now, what they've done is they've posted phone numbers here um, saying, please call these people. These are publicly available phone numbers. FYI, someone's going to complain. I'll, I'll get a privacy complaint or some nonsense. But this is all publicly available uh, information. Not like Twitter, not like YouTube cares anymore. And they have a call-in script. They want people to accuse people of being alt-right and get their event shut down. So uh, that that's what, you know, that's where we're at with this story. Whether or not they're actually Docs and Tucker Carlson, I can't say for sure. But what I can say is we have an additional story from uh, last year and I think this shows the tactic of doxing, which is which is a common tactic, and often it goes on. Uh, there, it's it's there's no accountability for these accounts that break the rules. So I, I highlight this specifically because I want to get back to the point about Tucker Carlson and the removal of uh, doxing. This story says Antifa group shares link to list of 1,600 ICE employees alongside photos, locations, and job titles. The list was originally compiled by a New York-based artist. Yes, this did in fact appear on Twitter, and Twitter didn't remove it. In fact, they only removed it after, on the Joe Rogan podcast, I pointed out that this is common, that it's against the rules, and they do it anyway. You now have All Out DC posting these photos, uh, these posters around DC, which is false and defamatory, but also seemingly, uh, they're accusing them, of containing um, personal and private information. These posters, I believe, should uh, would constitute uh, a hate crime if they include personal information. We can see here the photo of Tucker Carlson. I can't make out what's on it. But here's the thing. After I appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast, the tweet in question doxing these ICE agents was taken down. They want, the, the, uh, the Twitter people asked me for the information on these accounts, and I refused to give it up. Now, the left tried to claim that it was a secret conversation where I was trying to, like, pass off information to them, when in reality, you could hear me refusing to do it. But after Tucker Carlson was doxxed on Twitter the first time, and activists showed up to his house, and Twitter didn't remove it, Fox News actually refused to continue using Twitter. I don't know if they've they've ever come back. And they claimed it's because Twitter wouldn't uphold the rules. I kid you not. They posted the address of a private individual. It wasn't a news story. It was meant to target and harass and incite people to show up to his house, and Twitter did nothing to stop it. Once again, we now have another Antifa group doing the same thing. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I'm really clear here. Presumably, according to this one account, there's private information for Tucker Carlson on on this post. They're talking about some event that's going on, and they're trying to encourage people to protest. Well, in D.C., you're allowed to protest. However, if it is true they're posting private information, I'd lean towards that probably being the case because they've done it before. And I would also lean towards Twitter will not take any action against this at all. Their lies. Where's the photo of Joey? I wanted, to, I wanted to find that photo of Joey specifically because, oh, maybe that was it right there. Let me see if I can find this photo of Joey Salads. For those that are familiar, Joey Salads is a YouTuber who is a conservative, but he does um, like comedy and pranks for the most part. In this photo, there we go. This photo of Joey right here, it's probably going to get me in trouble on YouTube, is uh, it's, it's from a skit. It's, it's literally him doing a skit where he shows up and tries to get people to yell at him for wearing the armband. But you know what? There's a lot to criticize Joey for, and I'll criticize Joey right now for that, for, for that skit because it was a bad idea. Because now you have a photo of you wearing the armband, and that's all that matters. And they're putting it in their photos. So unsurprisingly, um, what we can say definitively is Tucker Carlson isn't speaking at this event. I don't know who else is speaking at the event that they've posted on photo on, on these posters, 
But many of these people aren't alt-right. In fact, many of them are very anti-alt-right. Yet, of course, we're going to see the smears. It's actually a tactic. It, 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 it is. One of the goals of the far left is to try and smear everyone as extremists because the average person won't actually look into it. What we have now are people who are going to see these, assume it's true, like this photo of Joey, and there you go. Case dismissed. So anyway, I, I, I feel like you guys get the point for the most part. Um, there were a couple other things that I wanted to highlight, but I think because I'm already cr uh, getting close to the line with YouTube due, due to the activism, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to scroll down on this. You know, the phone numbers are all pub uh, publicly available or published by All Out DC, but, um, you know, I don't know what else to say, so I'll probably have to blur some of this stuff. So, so that's why I think I'm going to stop here. It is what it is. We'll see what happens at the event. Stick around. I got uh, uh, another story coming up in a few minutes, and I will see you shortly.